Now, today's presentation is, uh, you know, everything you need to know about volunteer recruitment and engagement. And so, um, obviously, uh, you know, here at Civic Champs, we're all about volunteerism. And so today's topic is about recruitment and engagement. Um, a little bit about me um, and so who I am. Uh, my name is pronounced uh, Gun Wong, uh, so it's not very phonetic uh, in case that's helpful. Uh, and so I currently live in Bloomington, Indiana. My wife is a professor here at IU. I have two little kiddos, a, a three-year-old and an eight-year-old. Um, you can see some of my career background uh, as well. So I'm a Spartan, went to Michigan State for my undergrad, um, and then attended uh, um, Harvard Business School for my MBA, uh, and then had some uh, prior experience uh, in consulting and also um, with a couple other startups. Um, obviously, I volunteer a lot, uh, so both with the United Way, and I sit on the board uh, of a few other places as well. So that's a little bit about me. And in terms of, you know, for those of you that might not be as familiar uh, with Civic Champs itself, um, you know, we were launched in 2019, and basically, you know, it's our mission uh, to increase your capacity through volunteer management and really streamline, uh, you know, your ability to uh, manage, engage, recruit uh, your volunteers, right? And so we have a mobile app, we have a kiosk, uh, we help you with registrations, onboarding, waiver management, communications, and of course, reporting, as you see here. So that's a little bit why we do what we do and, you know, why we're uh, in the space. And, you know, we can really get rid of a lot of that manual process. Uh, here's just a snapshot of a bunch of folks that we serve. Um, so you'll see lots of uh, bigger organizations and some smaller ones, but this is what uh, helps us learn about volunteer management and sort of, you know, some of the best practices. Uh, certainly, uh, you all oftentimes have the best ideas, and so uh, this is where we get our learnings. Uh, we're also supported by some really great people, and so this is some of our advisors and some of our institutional supporters, um, but uh, topics for today. And so uh, I broke it down into six parts. And so first, I uh, want to just talk about, uh, you know, sort of high level trends, right? And, and looking at volunteer recruitment, um, that has continued to be sort of the uh, top uh, challenge that volunteer managers have stated. Uh, and so wanted to just dig into that a little bit. Uh, we have some stats I wanted to share about volunteer recruitment uh, since COVID-19. Um, and uh, I think this is going to help ground our conversation in terms of, uh, you know, what's changed or what might be consistent and, and the same as uh, before. And then we'll dive in, in in terms of both, you know, how do we create an effective volunteer recruiting strategy, uh, but also looking at, you know, what are some emerging ways to deepen our engagement with some of our volunteers or keep folks that uh, or, or open new avenues to engage uh, potential volunteers, right? Um, and then last but not least, uh, we'll talk about uh, volunteer appreciation and retention because obviously, as most of you know, uh, it's only, you know, step one when you get them on board, uh, but certainly we want to make sure that they stay with us as well. And then if you stay all the way to the end, we have a number of freebies uh, wanted to share with you all um, as a, just a, a, you know, sort of a take um, home gift from us to you. And yeah, feel free to, again, uh, you know, put things in chat if you have questions. Um, I'll try to monitor that as much as I can. Um, and so I see some folks have already uh, put in their, uh, you know, who who they are and, um, and you know, where they're coming from. And so uh, continuing doing that, I'm sure, uh, you know, folks would love to uh, connect with others uh, in the community. And so uh, this is a great way to do that. All right. So we'll dive in. And so this is some stats. Sorry, it's a little blurry. <laughs> I took a, uh, a screenshot from a PDF. Uh, but this is from Volunteer Pro. Some of you might be following uh, Toby Johnson, who actually published this. And so she does the report every year. And so one of the things that you'll see is that uh, volunteer recruitment is sort of the top challenge that volunteer managers um, are noting again here in 2023. That was true for last year. And then the only time that wasn't true in the last eight years uh, was during COVID, in which supervision and retention sort of took a front seat there, right? And that obviously makes sense. A lot of us weren't uh, recruiting volunteers um, during that time period, and it was more important to think about, you know, how do we supervise and how do we manage folks during COVID? Um, but now that COVID has 
uh, certain, not necessarily, you know, isn't it's not gone, uh, but that we're able to manage it. Uh, recruitment has sort of shot back up as the top concern for folks, right? And then the other piece of it, um, this again, this is from Volunteer Pro, um, is if you look at the experience of your uh, volunteer managers across the board, you'll see that from fall 2020, uh, fall 2021 to fall 2022, um, we are actually getting uh, trending to be more um, uh, younger and, and sort of more junior uh, volunteer managers, right? And so this is you know less than two years is first bucket of experience, two to five years is right here. Uh, then you have six to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, and over 20. And so uh, real interesting is over 20 years experience uh, really hasn't changed, right? So folks that have the largest experience uh, uh, level are, are sort of staying put, uh, but really we're replacing the sort of 16 to 20 year bucket. Um, a good chunk of that has, you know, getting replaced uh, now with folks that are relatively new. And I think this matters quite a bit, right? Because this means that um, there's less institutional knowledge, right? Uh, there's uh, maybe a, uh, you know, it, it, it could also serve as a new opportunity, right? So changing how we used to do things, right, with a new uh, volunteer coordinator. This is another cut at that same data, which I thought was really uh, interesting as well. And so what you're looking at here is that um, the tenure of uh, what the same data we had earlier, so how long or how experienced is a volunteer manager along compared to how long they've been at their current job, right? And so um, the bar charts are essentially how long they've been at their job. And so uh, less than six months they've been on the job, uh, seven to 12 months they've been on the you know job in terms of volunteer manager, uh, one to three years uh, as a volunteer manager and over three years. And so for our most uh, experienced volunteer managers, you'll see that most of them stayed through COVID at their existing employer, right? So they're at the same nonprofit uh, for, for three years or more. And that's true here uh, largely as well for sort of five plus years. And of course, you know, as you get to folks that are a bit more junior, um, uh, you have, you know, uh, fewer and fewer folks who, who, who've been with the same uh, organization for, for three years. Um, but one of the really interesting pieces here is that there's this 16% uh, of folks uh, who have less than two years of volunteer management experience, but have been at the organization for over three years, right? So these are uh, these are actually folks that have transitioned from another position into volunteer management. And so that's, you know, I thought that was sort of an interesting uh, little tidbit right there as well. And again, how it relates to volunteer man uh, recruiting, obviously, is the fact that uh, you know, there is a uh, a shift, right, that, that we're seeing. And so um, some other trends I thought were uh, important to get us sort of grounded as we dug in is just, you know, in terms of volunteer uh, recruitment, you know, what, what has that been looking like over the past uh, four years, right? And so um, the average total number of volunteers has really rebounded from pre-COVID to uh, fall of 2022. So, um, you know, again, the numbers are not very easily readable here, but if you focus on just the colors, <laughs> um, so each, uh, you know, this is, you know, basically, you know, a, a survey that asks how many volunteers uh, did you have in the past year, right? And so uh, some folks said, you know, I didn't have any volunteers. I had one to 25, all the way to over 2,000 volunteers. Um, and so you'll see that uh, the thing that's easy to see is that pre-COVID, the sort of, um, the colors and the size of each color is pretty similar to fall 2022, right? Which means that for the most part, organizations have rebounded back to the, roughly the same numbers of volunteers that they've had pre-COVID. Um, and that's shown here sort of in the mean uh, that Toby calculated of 4.8 uh, before COVID and the mean of 5.0 sort of uh, in, in fall 2022. Uh, but if you ask people, you know, how has your capacity changed or not in the same survey, 70% um, or 65% of nonprofits still report that their volunteer numbers are lower than pre-COVID, right? And so, you know, how do you sort of jive those two data points together? Um, and I think really it's because what you're seeing is the intensity of the hours 
or volunteering is lower these days, right? And so you might have the same number of volunteers, but the sort of the hours per volunteer is lower than it used to be. And so you're still feeling a little bit of a gap, right, in terms of your capacity um, that you, you're you missing that compared to pre-COVID. So hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully that is um, helpful in sort of grounding, you know, where, where, are, where are we today um, as an industry? And then from our own data, um, it actually looks pretty similar. Um, and so this is Civic Champs internal data. And so when we looked across the board for all of our customers, um, this is the these were the averages that we found. And so on average, you know, our customer base had 166 active volunteers um, in this past year in 2022. And these volunteers contributed on average 3,900 volunteer hours for that organization, which is really an incredible amount. Um, and the impact of those volunteer hours is $180,000. Um, and so we get that number from the uh, Corporation uh, for National and Community Services. They put out an, uh, a, uh, you know, how, what is the value of a volunteer hour, right? And so, um, and then if you looked at, you know, how many activities or shifts each organization has on average, you know, 770 uh, instances of volunteering on average, um, and each volunteer on, uh, is doing six acti activities per year, um, and the average hour per activity is, uh, is a six-hour shift, right? And so that's the overall average. But what we thought might be interesting is, you know, doing a couple cuts with some of our bigger cohort or segments. And so the first one we did was habitats, right? And so if you are similar to habitats, maybe you have a similar volunteer profile, this might resonate with you. And so what we saw was uh, a bit higher in terms of the total number of volunteers, uh, but lower number of total hours, and thus the impact was a little bit lower. And so the activities per volunteer and sort of average shift time uh, was a little lower as well. And that, as that compares to um, hunger relief uh, organizations, right? And so you'll see quite a bit more in terms of the active number of volunteers, right? This is um, compared to habitats or even the average. Um, but, and, and also uh, a decent increase in the total number of hours um, as well. And so thus the, uh, the impact was a bit higher, right? Um, but I think from a retention standpoint, we thought was really interesting is if you know folks in the animal welfare space, right? They actually had lower number of active volunteers on average, um, but the total hours volunteers was significantly higher. Right. And so um, if you know folks, uh, you know, in the space, you might want to ask them how they're doing uh, their retention <laughs> uh, because they do generally a, a, a pretty good job of that. Now, it might be because of the task that, the, you know, people might enjoy walking dogs on a regular basis or there might be some other factors. Uh, but that's uh, that was sort of really interesting to see, right, that on average, people are doing a lot more activities each year um, and the average amount of time per shift was also quite a bit higher. So that is sort of the stats around volunteer recruitment. And so diving into the content, right? And, you know, how do we actually create an effective volunteer recruiting strategy? Right. And so I think we'll, we'll dive into a couple different things. So we'll first talk about sort of different, uh, you know, sort of the process here. Um, and then we'll talk about, you know, we'll all share some tips as well as, as thought starters. And so in terms of, the steps that you can take um, to create an effective volunteer strategy. You know, I sort of had this A, B, C, D, E. Um, and so I think the first and most important is really thinking about who are who's the right target audience um, and volunteer profile that you want to recruit for. And you can get very technical with this, uh, you know, and, and we can, you know, dive in deeper, right, around um, what does it mean, you know, what does ideal volunteer profile really mean? Um, one way to think about it is, is thinking from a return on your investment, right? So all volunteer managers are very busy, right? Like there's a gazillion things that you have to do, right? Sometimes it's not even your primary role. Uh, you might be a development director that also wears a volunteering hat, or maybe you're a program officer that wears a volunteering hat as well, um, or maybe you're part time because you're a board member, um, and this is uh, this is your you know this is your own volunteering, um, and and so the ability to think about where to invest your time 
is pretty important, right? Like where, where do you get the most bang for your buck, right? And so, and that's really why it's important to identify who your I ideal profile is. Who are the folks that really resonate um, with the mission, uh, who are most likely to come and volunteer? Um, and when you try different channels or different groups, right, where do you get the best reception, right? Versus the amount of time that you have to spend uh, recruiting them, right? And so, for example, maybe you have a lot of success going to college fairs, right? And you can get a bunch of uh, volunteers from uh, the university or colleges, uh, but it turns out almost none of them stay, right? And so you get a bunch of one-time volunteers that they come and it actually takes you a bunch of time because you have to train them up and, you know, it's 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 very time intensive. And so if you did a little bit of, you know, it doesn't have to be extensive, but just like some notes and tracking, you know, estimating your time spent versus how much you got out of it, perhaps it compares less favorably to the, you know, two or three uh, retiree volunteers that you have that come in every week, though, right? And even though there was 50 college students that you got, you know, compared to the three, um, it might turn out that that's the best, you know, path for you, the greatest ROI that you can get, right? And so, uh, taking advantage of that so that when you spend the time to recruit, right, you're getting the most out of that, right? Um, and so once you understand who that ideal profile is, um, start to think about, you know, what matters to them. And the easiest, obviously, is just to talk to them, right? Um, but identify what words do they use when they talk about volunteering, right? Like, hey, why, hey, you know, um, Nicole, you know, thank you so much for, for, for coming today. You know, I had a couple quick questions, you know, why, why, what brought you in today and just hear what they say, right. And hear what the next person says that's in that sort of same cohort because their motivations and how they talk about volunteering is probably the same language and words you want to use when you're recruiting. Uh, we always like to hear, you know, people saying, you know, uh, sort of, uh, you know, showing that empathy, if you will, right, and, and talking to us in the language that we're most comfortable with. And then um, the next point then is, you know, let's say you know who you want, you figured out how to communicate the, to them properly, right? Then it's, well, where where are they or where can you reach them, I guess, right? Meeting, meeting them where they are. And so... Um, this can be very different for different types of demographics. We have lots of blog articles around like how to deal with Gen Z versus other folks, right? Um, and, and so, you know, some ideas might be that, um, you know, it, it might be that it's, uh, you know, people are you know, easiest could be in, in person, right? Obviously there's, uh, you know, maybe they're looking online. They're, you know, you're finding that a lot of them are, you know, just Googling, right? And then so, okay, great. Well, how do you get in front of those folks in the, in the ways that they like to engage, right? And so um, we'll dig into this in a little bit in terms of virtual volunteering or micro volunteering as well, right? Those are also other venues or avenues um, where you can expand your reach, right? Despite by offering something a little bit different, perhaps than what you do today, um, but also then building that pipeline for people that might be interested, right? And then I think the, you know, the next piece is um, just making sure that when you're doing your recruitment, no matter, you know, who it is, um, to make sure you provide enough information or descriptions of what is expected, you know, what's the time commitment, where is it, right? And so that when someone has, um, if you think about yourself as a, as a consumer, Right. When you're trying to purchase something, there's a there's sort of a list of mental questions you need to answer. Right. So like, how much is it? You know, when can I get it? Right. All, all that kind of stuff. You know, is this good quality? And so you want to answer similar questions for your volunteers. Right. That are thinking, all right, well, can I do this? You know, do I have the availability? Is it close enough to where, you know, I need to be? Right. How long, you know, is the commitment here from us? You know, are they going to support me in the training? And because it sounds like this, you know, this uh, activity might actually require some training, right? Like, am I going to be supported in a way that feels good, right? So making sure you can answer those questions up front for folks um, so that they actually become interested and will reach out to you, right? 
Um, and we, and we, you know, at Civic Champs, we face the same issue in terms of our volunteer managers who come to our website. And so I'm not saying we always do this uh, uh, as, as, as well as we could, right? But we have to answer very similar questions for you all to say, you know, what is Civic Champs? What value does it bring? You know, how much does it cost? How do I get my ED to support it, right? That kind of, and, you know, but, but taking that same uh, framework, but then applying to your volunteers. And then last but not least, you know, asking for referrals, right? Volunteering is uh, is certainly more fun with friends. A lot of people do it because it's a social event. Um, and just like employees, right? Oftentimes, if you have a great volunteer, there's a really great chance that whoever they refer, is gonna be also a great volunteer, right? And so make sure you leverage that um, with your volunteers. And so here, you know, we won't dive into all 16 tips here. Um, I think about this less as things that you should do, uh, but more as a thought starter. And there's a link. And so once we send this, uh, we dive into each of these a little bit more. And so I'll just highlight a couple so that you can get a sense of, um, you know, what 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 these tips might be, right? And so um, one of them we talk about is, you know, uh, pursuing volunteer matching grants. And so this is, we have a separate webinar we do for, on this, right? But um Volunteer matching grants are usually from corporations uh, that give, you know, sort of provide donation dollars for uh, to match the volunteer hours that their uh, employees have done, right? And the way it relates to volunteer recruitment is one, um, you can uh, sort of identify the corporations and companies that do that and say, hey, you know, I saw you have a program. Clearly, you want to be involved in the community. Here's uh, opportunities for your employees to be involved, right? And oftentimes those HR uh, folks are looking, right? Actively looking for things uh, to do, right? For, for, for team building, for morale, et cetera. And so if you actually approach them, you're actually doing them a favor, right? Um, you know, the other piece of it is if you know these volunteers have uh, matching grants, some of the grants actually have requirements for how many hours they have to do before the grant is, is, is provided. And so if it says, hey, you must have volunteered 20 hours with an organization before I'm going to write a $500 uh, grant for that nonprofit of, of your choice, um, that could be a great retention tool, right? And so like someone comes, they, you know, spend, you know, let's call it four to eight hours with you, you can circle back with them and say, hey, did you know you do another 10 hours with us? Um, that will generate $500 in donations as well, right? And that can be really motivating, right, for folks. And so that's that's another way to, you know, that's one of the examples here. Um, you know, some of these are a bit more straightforward, right? Showing gratitude, uh, considering your former volunteers, et cetera. Um, but the... Uh, um, the other one I wanted to, to just hi highlight, right, is um, number eight here, right, encouraging and collecting feedback. And so here I think a lot of, um, uh, it, it's sort of like learning the language and talking to your volunteers, but uh, just getting an, a sense of, you know, what is it about your program that people really enjoy, right? And, and is there are there actually components that you can improve either on a process basis, um, maybe it's the activities, right? And because uh, if you have a great experience, people are, are more willing to do the referrals, right? And so just making sure that um, like like any other business, right, you're getting that feedback and you're able to sort of continuously improve what you're doing. Right? And so, yeah, again, we want to go into all of this. These are just thought starters um, in my mind for you all. And so, uh, you know, take a look when you have a chance. So we'll dive in now a little bit into um, some emerging volunteer engagement strategies. Um, and so here you can, you know, you know no, two, two, two strategies or, or sort of uh, things that I think are interesting that we've seen um, come up more and more, right? So one is around micro volunteering and the other is around micro donations. And so um, both of these, the way I think about them is they are ways to engage or stay engaged with your volunteers, right? Um, and so on, on the micro-volunteering, that's really interesting because 
you're allowing people that maybe don't want to make that full commitment, right? For for that that you might be requiring for certain volunteering uh, activities or tasks to say, hey, I I want to show some level of support, um, and maybe I want to sort of dip my toe in the water, and you're giving them that opportunity to do so. It also allows maybe uh, previous you know more dedicated volunteers that maybe for life. Uh, circumstances, right, are no longer able to contribute that recurring volunteering uh, commitment. Uh, but now they can say, oh, well, I can still stay engaged. I could still help out in these smaller ways, right? And so it's about flexibility and, uh, and sort of smaller commitments here. Micro donations is the spot that, you know, uh, volunteers are twice as likely to donate. Uh, most of your volunteers do donate uh, to organizations they support. Uh, most donors also volunteer at the places they donate to, right? Um, but there's there's definitely a gap, right? Between you know, there's not a perfect overlap in those groups. Uh, and so, can you make it easy for folks to um, uh, to provide that you know next level of support, right? In terms of uh, not just volunteering, but also you know, giving financially as well, making it easy for them. And it's a, it's a different way to engage that audience. Because if you think about your organizations, most of them, most of you all probably have uh, mailing lists or email lists that are just for donors, right? And the reports and communications that come from development uh, look a little different, sound a little bit different, Right. And so getting someone that to see that sort of more holistic picture of your organization uh, can be quite helpful. Right. For, for right. Um, and also provides your development team with, you know, sort of a new point of contact here. Right. Oh, yeah. And I see, Amanda, you're you, you have a couple uh, suggestions on micro volunteering. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> um, and so here's a couple example on micro volunteering. Right. And so. Uh, on the left are activities that are more characterized by their flexibility. And so maybe it's like sorting donations or materials, right? So almost all of these require little to no training. That's another key component of micro-volunteering. Uh, maybe it's picking up or dropping off items, right? Something you could do on your way home, on your way to something else, right? Uh, that people can help with. Uh, but not people. Obviously, you need to be vetted and, and, and there's a lot more uh, requirements if you're <laughs> transporting people. Uh, feedback on marketing materials, right? Uh, these, you know, thinking about this, uh, your skilled volunteers, is there, are there ways that they could uh, help that are not constrained by a specific time period, right? They could say, hey, okay, here's a document. I know you're an expert. Here's, uh, you know, what do you think? Translation is sort of sits in that similar bucket, right? It could be in real time. Maybe someone's willing to volunteer, uh, over the phone, right? If you if you have someone come in that needs translation, and they say, "Hey, yeah, when you when you see some of that, need, you know, speak Spanish, speak Chinese, whatever it is, right? Give me a call." Um, or maybe it's translation for a document, and so that can be helpful as well. Designing a logo, same thing as the marketing, uh, writing cards, thank yous, or pick me ups, right? That's a that's a thing you could do at home. They could bring it to you. Um, they could do it virtually, right? Um, and so there's different versions of this. Maybe it's thank yous for your donors. Maybe it's thank yous. Uh, for for volunteers, maybe it's uh, you know cards for for kids, right? Whoever it is that you're or or, um, or the um, uh, your clients that you serve, right? There's a lot of different ways to help there. Um, other sort of trash pickup, general cleanup sort of activities, uh, pretty self-explanatory there. And then there's ones that you can even do in less than five minutes that we probably don't think about as volunteering necessarily. Uh, but again, it's this way to stay connected and engaged with your constituents. So maybe it's just sharing something on social media, uh, completing a survey, leaving a review, signing a petition, right? Um, you know, uh, getting that bumper sticker, right? Just building the, that awareness in, in your community uh, or recording a quick video, right? So they could take their phone, record a quick video about like, why does your organization matter to them, right? That's, that's great content. It's very easy, quick. Um, they can send it to you. Right, as a, as a way of volunteering. And so these are just like some examples. And then on micro donations, we'll actually use Civic Champs as an example, right? So this is uh, screenshots of our platform. And so on the left, you could see, you know, when someone has finished volunteering, we ask for some feedback, right? Uh, so collecting that feedback, 
indicating how quick, you know, how happy someone is or not, right? So with these uh, smiley faces, um, and if someone were to say they were quite happy, right, um, you could optionally uh, provide them with a, a prompt for a small dollar donation, right? You obviously start with um, being grateful for, for their gift of time, but also tying it to something that they've done, right? That's really important, right? Like what is the activity that they did that they were excited and, and felt inspired by, right? And then making that the the ask tied to that, right? That says like, hey, you know, in this case, I think it's matching a dollar for each hour that they volunteered, right? Perhaps it's around, um, you know, if they were in, uh, you know, uh, in, in meal delivery or in some sort of hunger relief organization, it could be about, you know, uh, how many meals, uh, you know, their contribution could serve, right? Um, given that it's tied to, you know, the activity that they just did. Right? So hopefully that makes sense. And of course, you know, making it easy for folks uh, to actually do the giving itself. Right. So, um, so that's, you know, the, uh, the highlights around, you know, uh, volunteer recruitment and uh, some of the emerging strategies that we've seen. And then one of the things, you know, we'll just take a quick moment and, you know, wanted to show you a couple live examples as well um of what that might look like with uh across different folks right and so um here is um uh one of the oh actually sorry wrong one um here's you know uh a nonprofit, um the J jfcs which is jewish family and community services in pittsburgh um and so this is their website and so they have a volunteer uh, link here and you can see you know, here's all the different ways you can volunteer. And so they have sort of different descriptions. Um, they talk about why volunteers uh, love volunteering with them. Um, they have a little video, right? They have uh, testimonials. Um, here's all your contact points, right? So they have uh, various folks you can reach out to. Um, and then they have different types of volunteering. You have group volunteering, you know, for existing volunteers, you can um, have different resources, right? Obviously, we're we're partners with them, so they have resources about how to use Civic Champs as well. And then if you go up here, um, let's say you're interested in the food pantry, if you click, it has information around, you know, how can you take on, a, uh, you know, what kind of time requirements are re uh, are needed, right? So you can help us uh, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, right? And here's the activities that you would do, right? And here's how you could get started. And so it makes it pretty straightforward. Um, if you click get started, right, it, it takes you to uh, to Civic Champs and then sort of creating an account. Um, and then once you're in there, right, um, this is a little bit of our platform, right? But you could see, you know, you have an event calendar that you uh, you can manage with folks. You can again provide that next level of detail for your volunteers, right? To say, hey, here's exactly where it's at. Here's the date and time. Um, here's how many shifts are available or not. Um, and then here's your point of contact, right? So you all that information is upfront and easily accessible. Um, and for volunteers, you know, here's a you look at the registration link. Um, this is the view that they would see, right? And so in this case, it tells you that this event is full, right? And so you have ways to manage that experience for them. And so that's a little bit, you know, in terms of volunteer recruitment, you know, how we might be able to help as well. Um, you know, and you can see, you know, who uh, who has signed up for different shifts and you can filter um, and you can message them if you need to, to say, hey, you know, are you still available? I see you haven't showed up, right? That kind of information. So I want to just show you that real quickly. Um, and then the last two pieces, right? So uh, best practices for volunteer retention. And so step one is getting your volunteers. Um, uh, recruited. And then step two, obviously, is how do you retain uh, these volunteers, right? And so I don't think any of this is necessarily rocket science. Um, I don't think this has changed a ton pre or post COVID per se, um, you know, unlike the, uh, you know, micro volunteering, which I think is, is more of a trend since COVID um, has happened, right? Because you know, organized volunteering was, it was just tough to get people into one place, right? And so that does one reason micro volunteering has really exploded. Uh, but for retention, I think these are, you know, more tried and true 
uh, than anything else, right? So first is be responsive. This is the first, you know, this is the thing we hear the most of, from our volunteers of why they opted not to go to a particular nonprofit um, is that they submitted something, they showed interest, and then radio silence, right? And then, you know, maybe it's three months later, they get something back and they say, well, you know, at this point, you know, I've, I've moved on, right? And, and uh, you know, life life is uh, uh, short. And so I'm, I'm volunteering elsewhere, right? And so being responsive, and, and it's not even just saying, hey, you know, get back to them within the week, right? There's lots and lots of studies that show that even within the day, within the hour, within, you know, uh, the first 30 minutes, right, makes a huge difference in terms of your conversion rates, right? And so if you can get back to somebody within the hour, it's way better than within the day, actually, it turns out, right? And so uh, being responsive is a great way to boost your, uh, your sort of, you know, converting the people that are interested into actually volunteering with you, right? Provide clear directions. We already talked about this, um, but this is both not just upfront, but also, uh, you know, when you're at the event, making sure that volunteers know very quickly exactly what they're supposed to be doing, right? Because volunteers want to work. They don't want to stand around and, and wait to do your paper sign-in sheets and then, figure, you know, and then not have a volunteer coordinator show up for an hour, right? Like that is a poor experience for everyone. Um, and so make sure that when they show up, it's like, hey, thank you for coming. Here's all the stuff you need to do. And boom, you can get started in working, you know, in the first, you know, 10 minutes or so, right? Uh, collecting feedback. We talked about this, right? Obviously, to retain your volunteers, you want to make sure that uh, you know anything that might have come up that uh, is, you know, that you need to address. Um, in our case, you know, we have that smiley face system. And so you can quickly glance through to see if anyone has a sad face and reach out to them and intervene. Um, you can show appreciation, right, of course. And so this is, uh, you know, I think the, the best is obviously in person, right, just walking up to them and saying that you, how much you appreciate them. Um, you know, I think lots of folks still do the thank you cards. Um, we, I have some uh, recommendations as well in terms of tools, perhaps, um, that I can put here in chat. And so a couple of them that I like are um, thank you is a good one. Um, these are little video recordings you can send out to your volunteers. Um, kudo boards is another good one. Um, not board, sorry. I think it's just kudo board. Um, this is maybe for your board members or more dedicated volunteers. It's a group thank you that's digital. Um, and so you could put like pictures and quotes and have lots of people sign it. Um, and so it's a nice way to show appreciation that's, um, uh, that's a bit more unique as well, right? You can, of course, feature them, right? And so if you have a newsletter, uh, this is not super hard, right? Take a picture, you know, do a little thing about them, maybe ask a couple questions like, hey, why are you involved? You know, what what, what brings you here? Uh, why, you know, uh, you know, what would you like to share with other volunteers, right? That kind of stuff. Um, and just to make them feel like they've been, uh, they've been heard. And then the last but not least, um, and again, um, I don't think this happens nearly as often, right? Which is just to uh, ask people to come back, right? Um, I think the automated version of this is fine. It's better than nothing. Um, but if you can catch them in person, right? Um, especially your first time volunteers and just say, hey, you know, um, you know, uh, Carrie, you know, thank you so much for coming in today, right? Hopefully you had a great time. Oh, that's great, blah, 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 right? You have a little chat. Um, yeah, and what 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 availability do you have? You know, do you think you can come back again to help? Um, I'll just say, yeah, 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 right? And and then maybe even book them, right? For, for their next uh, volunteering, right? You know, I wouldn't be uh, shy on... Um, I'm making that ask, right? And, and and getting on their calendars, right? And so everyone's busy because the moment they walk outside out of your door or your facility, right? Um, uh, your organization's priorities is, is going to drop, right? Because they're on to the next thing uh, that, that they're supposed to be doing. And so while you have them, right? Take advantage of that. Um, and then, oh yeah. And these were just a couple of the ideas um, we had, uh, but I, you know, I put in chat as well, uh, but we we don't have to dive in too much. And 
as promised, though, um, I did have a couple freebies I wanted to share. And so, um, like I said, we're going to, um, uh, rec you know, we're recording this presentation. We'll also share out all the slides with you. Um, and here's my contact info. If people want to stay in touch, feel free to uh, reach out if, if, if you're interested. Um, but we have a number of free resources here. And so we have uh, some guides that we put, put together that dives more deeply into recruiting. Uh, we have um, this framework around language market fit. Uh, so we talked a little bit about that, right? You know, what language does your uh, you know, your volunteers use? And this has a bit more of a framework that you can actually use, right? Step by step, exactly how would you execute a, 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 on that? Um, how to engage volunteers and donors of every generation, right? And so uh, just talking about, you know, hey, here's some differences and, and preferences from your volunteers. Um, in terms of how they like to be engaged. And so that could be useful there. Um, and then 10 ways to, you know, for your volunteers to feel appreciated and to boost retention, right? And then here um, is the other freebie, not freebie, <laughs> um, but we, you know, we're a benefit corporation here at Civic Champs. And so we were super excited uh, over the past uh, month or so to actually launch a partnership with TechSoup. Uh, those of that, you that don't know TechSoup, it's a fantastic resource. Uh, they have discounts on almost every tech product out there. So if you use Microsoft, Google, Adobe, um, I would always check out TechSoup because they've got uh, nonprofit specific discounts, right? And so um, we have this great deal with them. Uh, where you can get up to 50% off if you're a smaller nonprofit uh, with uh, using Civic Champs. And so you can learn more here at Civic Champs backslash TechSoup. Um, and if you want to learn a little bit more about us, you can book a video or one-on-one -on -one demo uh, with us. So some of you may not want to talk to a live person, and so you can just watch the video. Um, others may uh, want to get some answers uh, you know, from, from questions you have, and so a live one might be better there. And then, um, and I see we have a couple uh, questions here. And so let me see. So Vince had a question. What is the time frame you use before making a volunteer inactive, i.e. quarterly, six months, one year? Um, so we, Vince, for us, we think about it on an annual basis, typically. Um, I think most of our organizations uh, likewise think about um, their inactive volunteers on an annual basis. Um, that's how we charge, uh, to, right? So we, you know, no no one pays for inactive volunteers with Civic Champs, and so we do that piece uh, annually as well. Uh, you can certainly, you know, I think if you want to take it to the next level and think about it from a volunteer retention standpoint, certainly the analytics um, could be really powerful. If you see someone that has consistently volunteered but has now, you know, uh, sort of suddenly stopped uh, for whatever reason, and, and and you want the ability to flag them and um, and reach out to them, so maybe they're not quite inactive yet, um, but you want to be proactive. Uh, that could be a really neat tactic to employ as well, and and maybe you you know, in, in that case, you you probably don't want to wait for a full year. Uh, but maybe you you want to look at a report um, or the ability to say, hey, you know, when was someone last active um, and look at reporting there. And so, for example, here, we'll just show you in Civic Champs. And again, you know, I know lots of folks use other platforms. And so, uh, but this is uh, a way you could do it on our platform. And so here, what you're looking at, you know, at the top, you have uh, all sort of your summary data. Each row here is a volunteer. And so last activity is one of the columns we have. And so, for example, you could um, say, hey, you know, when was someone last active, right? And, and maybe filter by that. Um, you can even say, I want to, you know, uh, I want to filter by, you know, people that have a certain number of hours. Um, and, and then I want to see, you know, what when, when, when was the last time they were active or not, right? And so that could be uh, a good way to um, uh, keep your volunteers. Right? Yeah, any other questions 